And alongside Davis Sanchez, Matt Dunnigan, Milt Stiegel, and what an absolute thriller. Ooh. Shocking between the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Saskatchewan Amen. Rough Riders. Amen. And you know what? Rule for life when it comes to the CFL. Never leave a game early and never turn off a game because you have absolutely <laughs> no idea what's going to happen. And Chez, the end of this oh. game, I mean, the Riders, all those fans sticking around the 33,000, and they almost pulled it off. We started to talk about, you know, what's happening now next week for this football team after another loss for the Riders, and all of a sudden, it's ball back after, <laughs> guess who, Roller Milligan. But here, this is the two-point touchdown, and with a two-point conversion, didn't get it, and then that onside kick, and Roller Milligan again. Mm. Maybe the league's best, best teams player, maybe the league's best defensive player now, maybe uh, the most clutch player, making a huge play there. Yeah, and Willie Jefferson, he's out there for a reason, because he's tall, lanky, he can get up, but yeah. Milligan said no. Trevor Harris said thank you, and then Holmes said, I'll take that. And wait a minute, there's P.I on the field and then it's Lowther's opportunity to redeem himself from a couple weeks ago. That's that's a long field goal. What was it? 60 yards? It's good. Yeah. Look at it. We, we little, thought it, it was good. good. It, just, oh. Oh. It, it, it was a letdown. It was a letdown. Saskatchewan, they fought hard. Uh, but the league was just too much for them to come back. Shout out to Micah Johnson, too, for putting in a you great effort. Yeah. Man, that was special. But yeah. next week will be exciting because these two teams, they know they're in a position now that they have to make it happen. But I'm telling you, if I'm the Riders coming into the Banjo Bowl now, too, I mean, this is getting tougher, especially 0-5-1 and in their last six games now. It's not going well. For the Bombers, look, yeah. this is a great win to go into Regina yep. and get it, but it comes at a loss right now. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but for Zach Kalaros, the end of the first half, I mean, we yeah. saw Miles Brown go in high on him, and then we didn't see Zach again, but it was an upper body injury. We know his history with concussions. Fingers crossed that it's not that serious, Chess. Yeah, it didn't look that. I won't, won't speculate. No. He didn't come back in. So, uh, But what I see is a great defense uh, by these Bombers, and that's how, that's how they won this game. Because in the second half, after Zach went out, they couldn't do anything offensively. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was three and out, it was two and out, three and out, two and out. They did nothing in the second half. They got one field goal. The other field goal they got was off of the return from Alfred. So, look, I think this. Look, they did a great job of finding a way to close out this game. And that's what they're going to take away from this. But big picture, I'm going to question either one or two things has to happen. You either open up the playbook for your quarterback. Chris Traveler in that second half, through one pass in the air over five yards. One pass. That's that's not they're they're not opening up the playbook for him. If you can if he's gonna be your back and quarterback, you either gotta open it up and give him opportunity to throw the ball down the field, or you gotta question who your backup quarterback is. Because moving forward, that's not gonna get it done. Yeah, and um, I, I do credit Buck Pierce for uh, keeping him um, in check and his team in a position to win the football game. He just didn't want uh, his quarterback, who doesn't get many reps throughout the week, an opportunity or put him in a position where he wouldn't have success. And so he tried to play to his strengths and uh, and they lean on the defense. They threw the ball over five yards in the air once in the second <laughs> half. That is Davis. protecting a quarterback that's not good enough, that you Davis. don't think is good enough. Davis, come on, man. We were talking about this off air. Yep. Don't go there, man. All right. Let's you, talk about I, it on there. I, I, I'm telling you that um, it is is difficult, and, and I'm praising the offensive coordinator for doing the job that he had to do in order to give his team a chance to win. Hey, maybe Strebs, if, if, if Zach can't go, maybe that playbook be open up to him when he has an opportunity to run the first no, no. team reps in practice. No, I mean, because the time he started, he was running, they ran the ball. They're not going to open it up. They're going to keep it what it is. They know Strevler. They can't open it up. It's unfortunate, but they can't open it up. They will run the ball like they did the one game Strevler started. I think they ran for like 250 yards or whatever. They're not going to allow Strevler to drop, drop back and throw the ball because he can have he cannot or have success doing maybe it. Maybe we don't even talk about this because yep. maybe Zach's okay. Maybe that was Hopefully just precautionary. Yep. I think we can all just cross our fingers that that is the case. In the meantime. I can't wait for the Banjo Bowl. And I know we've been across the country, but I think we should make one more road one trip. One more. <laughs> Maybe we should go to Hamilton yeah. for Labor Day Monday as we send it back to Sports Center.